Open up CapCut, start a new project and drag your footage to the timeline or press the plus icon on the thumbnail. In the video panel, select the cutout tab. At the bottom, select the box next to auto cutout. Now CapCut took only 15 to 30 seconds to cut out my scene in multiple tests with the footage that was about 26 seconds long. Now there is one extra step I do so I'm able to use this footage inside of Premiere Pro. I simply add a green screen to the timeline, put the layer under my video footage and scale it back up inside of the basic tab. Then I export the footage where I need it. Once I import the footage from CapCut into Premiere Pro, simply go to the effects panel and type in ultra key. I use the eyedropper to select the green screen and bang, I now have myself a cutout. This same piece of footage would take me close to like five and a half minutes inside of After Effects. So if you have multiple clips to edit, this tool just became your best friend. So why are we doing this? For short form, knocking out the background opens up some creativity in my opinion. If you've seen our Ali Abdal video or any of his edits, this technique is used often. I personally love it. I like being able to bring in my subject in and out of frame at any moment in the clip. So let's walk through that. We have three assets we're going to be working with. We have a background, we have our original footage, and we have our CapCut version. So I'm going to drag in our original footage from a project panel. We're going to do the CapCut version on top of that footage. And I don't need this layer of audio, so I'm going to get rid of that. Or you can drop it in from your source panel with this little film strip. That'll just bring the video layer. And then I'm just going to put the background uh, just off to the side for now. So let's get rid of this green screen. We're going to go to Ultra Key, drop that onto the CapCut layer, hit that eyedropper in the effects controls panel, and it is gone. Going back, we're going to toggle C, our razor tool, hold shift so we can cut through all of the layers. And let's just make a cut here, somewhere around here, just so we can show you the example. I'm going to cut off the CapCut version from the end and over here where I cut. All right, so we have this little cut here. Now, I like doing Gaussian blur on my, in this case, the background footage is our original footage. So I'm gonna do Gaussian blur on that footage, on the original footage. And now if you'll see, I'm gonna do the blurriness at 50. That's kind of my go-to. So everything looks like it's out of, out of focus now. All right, and then I step this up with the Lumetri color panel. I'll do window. And then you can do Lumetri Color and that'll pop it up. But here it is for me. I'm going to just drag the exposure down a little bit just so there's a little bit more contrast. So to make this transition look nice and smooth, I'm going to do Cross and I'm going to do a Cross Dissolve at the beginning cut I did and the end cut that I did. So just put those on the ends. Key detail here is to zoom in and make sure that your cap cut version is drag that to where it matches up with where your transition is happening. So just make sure it locks on there. All right, zooming in, dragging it, boom, lines up perfectly. So let's go ahead and see the front end. That I'm actually the nice and smooth. Let's see the back end. Seen videos recently. Beautiful, right? Now let's incorporate a background. Just drag this in here. We cut it to size, something like that. So same thing. I'm gonna drag this cross dissolve on this front end. So instead of going to our original footage, we're now going into this atmosphere with this background. So. Let it play. Actually, the podcast guy. There it is. So, a lot more options that we can do now. I'm going to extend this out. Extend both of these out. And then let's make some changes. So, I want to now bring in some elements. You see this in the Ali Abdal style all the time where people are using it. So, I'm just going to make another cut somewhere around here. And you can either use the motion. You can use the motion tools, but I like to have some blur involved. So let's do transform under distort, drag that on there. And I'm gonna go to the very beginning of this clip. Make sure you're at the beginning, drag it down. So here's my transform tool. I wanna make sure that I have my keyframes in order. So we're gonna be working with the position. Just go ahead and start one right here. So I wanna drag myself down a little bit so I can put something above my head. Starting here, I'm gonna go about five keyframes. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure that layer is still selected. And then I'm going to move it over move myself down. There I go. And then I'm gonna give myself a little bit of blur. Let's do like 180 on this shutter angle to make it a little bit smoother. So now let's see what that looks like. We've been posting videos. Re nice and smooth. So let's say I wanted to put myself out or drag myself up or down. I can do that with the transform effect as well. So I want myself to come out at this point, right? I'm gonna make a cut, go ahead and get rid of that footage. All right, so I'm gonna add another transform tool and here I'm going to go to the very end. 
where I'm actually visible. And I'm going to do another keyframe. So on this last keyframe, I want to make sure that I'm out of the picture. So I'm going to hit the position and I'm just going to drag myself out of frame. So I'm not visible at all. And then I'm going to go about five keyframes. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm just going to bring it back to the default. So if I drag it down, all right. Make another keyframe, it's gonna be the default. In my case, it's 540. Okay. And then you should have an animation. Videos recently. All right, and then let's make it a little bit smoother so it's not so robotic and obvious. Go to the shutter angle, 180. Now it introduces some blur. Videos recently about. Look at that. All right, so I'm going to drag this up because say I wanna come back in. Same thing, but we're flipping it. So I'm gonna make sure and take off these transform, take off both of these. Okay, dragging this out. Now let's say I want to come back around here. All right, same deal. There I am. I want to bring myself in, transform. All right, go to the very beginning, and we're doing the opposite. So I'm going to go to the transform settings, make sure it's on there. And then I'm going to start at the position, hit that first keyframe, and then I'm going to drag myself so I'm not visible. Go about five frames, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go back to the default, 540. And that's gonna bring me back in a frame. Let's put a little bit of blurred on it, 180 for the shutter angle. And ladies and gents, Subtitles and there it is. Board. Have fun with it, you go up, down, left, right, whatever you wanna do, those are some options to get you started. Now, if you made it this far, I wanna reward you with a bonus tip. Let me know what you think in the comments. I wanna thank two of our students, Fabian and Linda, for making me take a second look at CapCut. I've had people in our community really have a tough time with HDR footage usually shot with iPhones, and I've had that problem too. You've probably seen the great tutorials from Premier Gal, Javier Mercedes, Brian Castillo, and many more. Well, I watched a lot of those and I still didn't get the color I wanted. So I simply threw the HDR footage that I had inside of CapCut, and would you look at that? CapCut converted it automatically, and the colors are closer to the original than ever. It works perfectly inside of Premiere now, and if you're using different tools, please check out the creators that I listed in the description. I'm happy to add more resources that give you a similar result. And with that being said, I'll be taking a closer look at CapCut in the future. See you soon.